One of the cool features that you can use when you use Cloud 66 for Rails to deploy Rails stack on cloud is the ability to choose different types of deployments. Here I have a Rails stack that I've deployed on AWS. It has five servers and a load balancer. And I want to show you how you can deploy it in different ways. I'm going to go to deploy and choose deploy with options. I have three deployment options and three rollout strategies. Let's start with deployment options. Deployment option parallel is when you have five servers, for example, and we deploy all your code to all of those servers at the same time. So we take all of them off of the load balancer, they, the code gets deployed to it, and once it's tested, it gets back on behind the load balancer. The obvious advantage is it's fast because all of the deployment goes in one go to all of your servers. The disadvantage is that you're going to have downtime. It's not ideal, for example, for production stacks, uh, but it could be useful in cases where you can afford the downtime or non-production stacks, for example. The second option that you have is a serial deployment. Serial deployments, kind of self-explanatory, where we take one server off the load balancer, deploy the code, test it. If it passes, then we put it back behind the load balancer. In any of those cases, when the tests fail, we will not, uh, you know, put it back behind the load balancer because obviously you don't want to have bad code running um, on your production stack, for example, and we stop the deployment. So the serial option is the safest option in terms of not having a downtime, but it's the slowest. There is a third option, however, if I have more than four servers and it, there is a minimum uh, requirement for having four servers. Um, the rolling deployment is a kind of a mix of the two. So we take a subset of the servers offline behind the load balancer, deploy the code, test it, if it passes, we put it back behind the load balancer. Then we take the other set. It's always a split into two, and it starts with, uh, with at least four servers. Which servers get chosen for what uh, stage of deployment is based off a lot of heuristics, and you can influence it as well. So this is kind of best of both worlds, if you will. So those are the three deployment options that we have. Then we move on to rollout strategies. Now, rollout strategies work on with any of the deployment servers, uh, deployment options. So no matter how you deploy your code, to uh, your servers, rollout strategy dictates how many versions of code are on the uh, server and how the traffic is going through them. No rollout strategy is the default one, is the most basic one where we take the code, usually head on main, we deploy to all the uh, servers based on your deployment um, uh, method. And um, once the deployment is finished, the visitors will go through the new code. But you can choose blue-green deployments. Now, when it comes to blue-green deployments, you have two options, again, based on that. When, you, when it's a blue-green uh, blue, uh, deployment is uh, a way of deploying two versions of the code to every server that you have, the old one and the latest, and having both of them essentially warm on, uh, on all the servers. And there are advantages to this. So if I choose the immediate switchover option, this means that the new code is going to be deployed and traffic is going to be served from the new code, but we're gonna keep the old code on the server as well, just in case you need to switch over back to the old code very quickly. This is very useful when you're not comfortable or confident about the new code, or you wanna uh, have the option of switch, switching back to the old code if, if something goes wrong. Um, the other option that you have is a delayed switchover. In this case, it's kind of the opposite of immediate switchover, where we roll out both versions of old and the previous one, onto the uh, servers, but we serve traffic, we continue serving traffic to the old code, and you can then switch over to the new one. This is useful when you wanna uh, test your code against production data or production environment servers uh, until you're comfortable and confident about it, and then you switch over immediately to the new one. Once you're happy with it, you can kill the old code from the servers. Um, in all these options, you have the, the choice to select one of the blue or the green uh, deployments when, it, when the traffic comes from your machine or your uh, office or subnetting network to hit either of the code bases internally and deterministically so you can run your tests. The third and last rollout strategy that we support is Canary rollouts. So when it comes to Canary rollout, again, like blue and green, we deploy both the new and keep the old code on the servers. But you can here define what's the percentage of the visitors that you want to send to the new code as opposed to the old one. And this way, what you can do is that you can uh, run code, uh, run the new code, or run visitors through the new code gradually. So you can gain confidence or you can test it gradually for some subset of uh, your, your visitors. And this way, uh, you're not just 
you're putting all of your visitors into the new code if you think that your code might not be able to handle the load or there might be other issues with it. Um, and once you start the deployment, say with 10%, you're going to have a slider on the user interface that you can gradually increase the number of uh, percentage of the visitors that see the new code. This is very useful for cases that you want to have a uh, gradually put load on the new code. So those are the three rollout strategies and deployment uh, options that you have with Cloud Success for Rails. And I think if you're using Rails uh, product that we have, it's, these are going to be very, very useful uh, when it comes to deploying your application to production.